Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today's video is one I wish I didn't have to make, but at this point we're pretty well fed up with what's going on. Heaps of you have been asking why we don't have a GeForce RTX 2060 review. And since it's not coming today, tomorrow, or even in a few days time, I thought I'd explain uh, why that is and touch on a few other things as well. So firstly, let's get the RTX 2060 review out of the way, or the lack of a review. And we were all well aware the RTX 2060 was going to be announced at CES. Uh, weeks out, it was really no secret to the public. And we were told it was more than a month in advance by quite a few industry contacts. So that being the case, it was well and truly on our radar. The week and a half before CES, I reached out to my NVIDIA contact and asked when samples would be available. I actually did this because prior to emailing them, I was told by quite a few of the US-based reviewers that they already had access to the review guide, they had a sample in hand, and they even had the drivers and had begun testing. So I was a little puzzled as to why we'd heard absolutely nothing. Uh, typically, NVIDIA and AMD, Intel, they all seem to ship uh, samples to all the various media outlets around the world at pretty much the same time. Anyway, my contact replied later that day with, well, with basically nothing. And we were told that headquarters, so NVIDIA HQ, had a strict guideline this time and my contact was not able to comment on unannounced products, concluding that you're always on the top of our list and I will fill you in as soon as I can. So what can I say to that? I was basically telling them that I knew uh, other reviewers had RTX 2060 samples from NVIDIA. They had them in hand, uh, that I knew that the review guide was out in the wild and that I knew the drivers were available. Of course, none of these things had been enabled on my press account and I knew good and well that they were withholding our sample. Then after four days of nothing from NVIDIA, I received another email asking me to sign an NDA so that they could rush out a sample. So that seemed like things were moving in the right direction. Uh, the NDA didn't mention a release date. So at that point I had no idea when the reviews could go live. It was just one of those sort of blanket NDAs. It was to cover all products and announcements for 2019. Uh, similar to that one not that long ago that created a heap of fuss. Anyway, I read over the entire thing. There was nothing unusual there. Um, these things literally have zero impact on how we review products anyway. So I just played ball and signed it. That same day, a few board partners reached out to us with their own NDAs for upcoming RTX 2060 models. So I signed away and these NDAs stated that the embargo uh, would be lifted on the 14th of January. So great, I finally knew when reviews were going live. Or so I thought. Three days later, the day NVIDIA was set to host their CES keynote, I received a DHL tracking number from NVIDIA for my RTX 2060 FE sample. It had been sent from overseas using the standard DHL service, which meant it wasn't expected to be delivered for seven days, which would land it on my doorstep on the 15th, a day after the AIB reviews go live. That's certainly annoying, but I thought to myself, well, at least I have some AIB models to review for you guys. So there's that. Uh, on the 7th, I watched the keynote, covered it and provided a video on the channel detailing the RTX 2060 announcement. I'm sure many of you have seen that. After that, I went to bed because it was quite late. And then the next day, I woke up. Except I woke up to an internet littered with RTX 2060 reviews. At this point, it was pretty clear NVIDIA had screwed us. And unfortunately, not for the first time. NVIDIA seemed very reluctant to include us in their initial round of RTX 2080 and 2080 Ti reviews. They only provided us with a 2080 at first, while others got both. We didn't get the 2080 Ti in time for testing, so we were forced to use an AIB model, which we were able to source last minute. NVIDIA also held back on giving us access to the driver. Again, I had to get this from another source. NVIDIA did eventually give us access, but it was so delayed that without sourcing it ourselves, the review would have been severely compromised. The exact same thing happened for the RTX 2070 release. We got our FE model a day after reviews went live. Thankfully, once again, we were able to source a board partner model in time so we could present you guys with a detailed day one review, but it was a massive run around that almost didn't work out. It seems Nvidia wasn't that impressed with our lukewarm reception of the RTX range because back when we were raving about the value, performance and efficiency of Pascal, they were throwing the things at us left, right and center. We even got a pair of Titan X cards, though they decided not to send the Titan XP version after we mocked the value of the Titan. Hmm, perhaps it was around that time that the relationship started to fall apart. 
Whatever the case, Nvidia was more than willing to work with us when we were providing positive GeForce 10 series coverage. And for the 10 to 15 years prior to that, we also seemed to get along pretty well. Anyway, jumping back to the RTX 2060 situation. Yesterday, I fired off a rather irate email to my Nvidia contact. And in return, I got a fairly typical response. Uh, they understood our frustration and they said it was definitely not their intention to block us from reviewing the RTX 2060. Uh, they went on to say that the first round of reviews or the first round of samples were very limited. They didn't have very many boards on hand and HQ tried to send us one as soon as possible. That was pretty much the entire response. At this point, there's probably a few of you watching this video thinking that I'm being all salty because I didn't get a sample. And well, to you, I'd say, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty pissed off. Uh, are we entitled to a review sample? No, not really. That said, we have uh, a long working history with NVIDIA and they did assure us that we were on their list and therefore we would be getting a sample. I guess you could say we are still getting a sample, so they kind of got me on a technicality there. Obviously, I'm frustrated due to the total lack of communication and then the generic sponsors that followed. I also write for TechSpot and have been doing so for a decade now. And in that time, NVIDIA has enjoyed a lot of positive content at TechSpot. Of course, some negative content as well, but overall, mostly positive as their products have been mostly good. So should I just accept that there weren't enough RTX 2060 samples to go around and we were just unlucky that we missed out? and there was no other real reason for why we missed out. It's not because we provide honest content that's in no way sugarcoated. At first I thought maybe it was just an issue with the Australian samples. We've seen that kind of thing in the past where the Australian samples get delayed just because, well, where we are located on planet Earth. So maybe that was the issue. Uh, but yeah, that, that theory didn't really pan out because the boys over at Tweaktown, who are based in Australia, uh, they managed to get a, their hands on a sample and their review Although it was quite brief, they did manage to get it out on time. So, I wonder why NVIDIA was able to get a sample out to Tweaktown ahead of the release, but not Harbour and Boxton TechSpot. Well, taking a quick look at their RTX content so far, we see that they haven't given a single card less than a 93% uh, overall score. The RTX 2080 Ti, for example, was given 100%. So, generally they have given the cards extremely positive reviews. Of course, they are 100% entitled to their own opinion and they can review products as they see fit. I'm not attacking Tweaktown here. I'm merely trying to work out why Nvidia decided to get them a sample and not us. Because let's be real for a second, there isn't a shortage of these things. If they wanted to send us one for review, they certainly would. Oh, and before I forget, we do have the same sort of score-based conclusion thing at TechSpot. I'm not really a fan of it, and I'm not in charge of putting it together. I just do the benchmarks and give my opinion. But I understand why TechSpot include it, because it seems like quite a few uh, readers do appreciate the score and summary. Anyway, the score is meant to be a reflection of my own opinion. Uh, the 2080 Ti was given an 80 out of 100, which I think is fair enough. And the 2080 was given 70 out of 100, which I also think is fair. The 2070 wasn't given a score. I must have forgotten about the scoring system on that one. But if the 2080 was given a 70, then that would seem appropriate for the 2070. Anyway, this leaves us in a bit of a tough position. We provide honest reviews, and it seems because of that, we're now getting denied samples. We just can't compete with reviewers giving over 90% for everything. I think our GeForce RTX coverage was extremely fair, and it seems to be in line with what you'll read and hear from other trusted sources. The 2080 Ti is an incredibly impressive product in terms of performance, but at an MSRP of $1,000 US and still a current market price of $1,300 US, I'm certainly not going to tell you to seriously just buy it. I've said it multiple times now, the RTX series isn't bad, it just isn't great either. It's a small step forward from what we had over two years ago now. The RTX 2080, for example, costs the same amount as the 2080 Ti. Performance is single digits better overall, and thus far Nvidia can shove ray tracing where you can't see rays cast. Ray tracing will likely be awesome in a few generations time, but paying a ridiculous premium for it now just simply isn't worth it. On that note, NVIDIA recently reached out to Tim after his coverage of ray tracing in Battlefield 5, and he had a pretty robust hour-long conversation with the team in the US that covered all sorts of things. While NVIDIA did want to have their say 
on RTX and perhaps clarify a few things in our coverage, NVIDIA repeatedly said that our coverage was fair and reasonable. And in general, they didn't have any issues with our RTX videos. In fact, the team over in the US said they were interested in working more closely with Harbor Unboxed and TechSpot for future launches. They felt as if we were a little out of the loop with necessary information to cover these launches. And yet just a few weeks later, Nvidia decided not to sample us an RTX 2060, which seems to go completely against what Nvidia were telling Tim over the phone. It's just a bizarre situation. So where do we go from here? Do we persevere with Nvidia or do we just give up on them and use our Patreon funds to buy Nvidia graphics cards in the future? Uh, we've managed to grow our Patreon account quite substantially uh, over the past year, and this has allowed us to buy quite a few Intel CPUs as they don't sample uh, locked parts or low-end models. Uh, it's not something they do just for us, it's something they seem to do for everyone. It's been that way for as long as I can remember, so yeah, we just make do by buying our own. And we're now getting to the point where it's feasible to buy NVIDIA graphics cards, so this is something we will seriously consider. Without question, missing out on day one coverage yeah, it'll be disappointing, and I know many of you look forward to our day one content, but waiting a week for in-depth gaming comparisons is, I think, something that most of you will be willing to do. Ideally, we would like to work closely with NVIDIA to ensure we can provide independent reviews as soon as possible, but getting shafted last minute stops being fun real fast. <laughs> Anyway, that's the story so far. It's possible we will have a big RTX 2060 benchmark comparison next week with over 30 games. Just depends on when we get our sample, and obviously we can't buy anything till the 15th. Of course, none of this will impact how we evaluate NVIDIA products moving forward. It might delay publishing, but it won't sway our opinion uh, one way or the other. As always, we work for you guys, and that's never going to change. Finally, I would just like to personally thank everyone who's left a comment supporting us, uh, saying they're missing our review and they'll be holding off with any purchases until we can provide a detailed review. It really is touching to read so many positive comments. Uh, the community support is always amazing and I promise I won't let you guys down. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. I'll catch you again soon.